God bless everyone this morning. And I just want to thank you for, for showing up and for being ready for whatever God has for each and every one of you this morning. We just know that God is good. Amen? Amen. So this morning, let's just start off, and I want to go real quick to the uh, Word of God. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. And it quickly says, it says, All honor and glory to God forever and ever. He is the eternal King, the unseen one who never dies. He alone is God. Amen? Amen. This morning, let's just know that that's who we, could, we give our heart to. Everything that comes out of our heart, that's who we worship this morning. Our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen? Amen. So this morning, we just want to thank you, God, for the opportunity to allow us to come into your house, Father God, and to worship you, Father God, and to receive from you, Father Lord, to feel your, uh, your comfort, Father Lord, and to hold on to your promises as we get ready to receive the word, Father Lord. We already want to thank you and praise you, Father Lord, for what you continuously do in our lives. This morning, Father Lord, every breath that we have, every that we are, Father God, we lift it up unto you, Father Lord, for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
worship him, that we take that decree to heart, and that we just know that God is in the door of
we journey back and, and we're finally out of our houses, but we are truly walking testimonies of what God can do. Amen? Amen. In such a short time, what God has revealed to us and how we've come out more than conquerors. Amen? Amen. And all he wants is for us to surrender. To surrender ourselves in his presence. To surrender all that we are because he has already shown us that he in one hand can take care of your life. Amen? And this morning, just surrender. Surrender all that you are. All that I am. And surrender it in the presence of the Lord this morning. Yeah. 
Father, there's no more powerful name than your name. It is so awesome, God, to be in the house and to feel your presence, to lift up our ways in the worship and praise and know, God, that you receive it. We want to render all honor and glory to you, Heavenly Father. It's because you live and we can face tomorrow. It's because of your blessings, of your strength, Lord, of your fellowship that we stand in victory. Knowing, God, that you're the God of today, meeting the needs of your people today. Wanting, Lord, to minister the hearts and lives of those who are going to watch this message, Lord. So I pray now as we deliver this message, a challenge to your people who are called by your name. We will humble yourself and we will seek your face and we will see your glory manifested. God, I pray that this morning will be a morning of victory for many people as they reach out to you. God, will experience your love. We've seen your miraculous power within my own household. I've watched you do your thing and my wife and I thank you, God, for who you are. So today I come with a challenge to mind the hearts of those that are here in church today and watching over Facebook and here on through YouTube that their life might be blessed, that the child's come before them they would understand it's for a better church, it's for a better person, it's for a great cause. We want revival, Heavenly Father, but we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. It's great to see that you're still alive. You made it to all this. And after that, you may be seen. If for some reason you don't have Facebook or any means of communication other than what you've heard in the past about what happened to my wife a week ago. And if you didn't know my wife had a school here in the church a week ago and we were all like willing for God, you know. And I just thought, I was teaching, I'm trying to teach and it's going to have to mind of all those who are here and the ones that are watching that God is a God of today. The God that worked miracles in the past is still working miracles today. Amen. And it never comes more alive than when it happens in your own household. So, you know, with the bottom line, short, long story short, she went to the hospital, they took a, a MRI, and I told her she had blood clots in her brain. And we began to pray and trust the Lord. Many, many, many prayed. We received a message from many people who prayed in her behalf. And when they did a second MRI, all, everything was gone. It was clear from her brain. It was done. It was done. She had a little problem with her mother. She woke up this morning and she was, uh, we're listening to, Christian music, God, I was getting dressed for church and she was just watching, began to praise the Lord, and our oh God just came down in the room. She began to speak in tongues. And she says, Babe, I'm healed. I'm totally healed. God has touched my life. And she would come out from another cup and do this to her legs and say, Look, 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 it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't hurt. I preach and teach a God of powerful, a God of today, a God's going to meet your every need. All you have to do is trust and believe in who He really is. So as I stand here today, I stand here not marvel, but knowing who I, who I really did. Trying to teach you to acknowledge uh, who Jesus Christ is. Trying to put him into your life that you might have the same kind of results. Don't say this is because you're a pastor. No, it's for everybody. We all have that same right. We all have that same privilege to go to Lord Jesus Christ and expect great things from God. So I challenge you. If you're going through something difficult today, there's a God of miracles still in place. And God is still, is still listening to our needs. He's going to hear your prayer. And today, you know, he wants to minister every need within your life. I was sharing with Brother Robbie. He was in my office. Before uh, he asked me, Pastor, how are you doing? I said, you know what, bro? I'm good. I'm good. I, I'm kind of fine. I said, you know what, brother? Because I know the enemy is trying to stop these messages. Messages God gave me to share with the church. And like I said, when I started this last week, it might not, it might not, it's a challenge really. This message is not for the everyday Christian who wants to come to church. This is for believers who will be part of the harvest of the great revival God is going to send to our church, to our lives, to our nation to our world, what he wants to do before his second coming. And I know what God delivered to me to come to church with is something very strong we have to deal with, but it's things that we need to do in order to see the fullness of Jesus Christ. We want the fullness, we've got to pay the price, people. There's a price that we pay. It wasn't free, it cost Jesus of life that we might have an abundant life. Therefore, we need to come to church and understand that if we bring these messages, I'm going to challenge you. You have the courage to stand before the mirror of God and look at yourself as only you and God can see yourself. I don't stand here and point fingers, accusing people of anything. I stand here with an open heart, with a passion in my heart that your life is going to be blessed. Let me tell you why. 
When your life is blessed, your home is going to be blessed. When your home is blessed, this church is going to be blessed. When this church is blessed, this community is going to be blessed. Why? Because it all starts one person at a time. If I can get just to one at that time. If one of you would really come full circle and you're coming to Lord Jesus Christ, you will see great things happen within our household. Don't sit here and say, the pastor, you have no idea what's going on in my house. There's nothing impossible for God. I listen to these songs. You have no idea how a lot you folks nailed this with these songs. You have no, when you hear this song, you go, oh my God. You would have thought we all got together on it. You would have thought that we talked about it and that uh, uh, fixes uh, the songs to go along with what I have to share with you tomorrow. But God laid from our The first thing we say about there's nothing impossible for God. How many believe that? Amen. Right? You believe that, you don't sit there and say, I believe it, begin to work it. You get to believe it with all your heart that God indeed is in control of all things. So we go and I come to understand fully that these lessons have been delivered unto me to challenge you and the many other people who have been watching this message is the following. Because of the lifestyle we had before the pandemic ever started, we were so comfortable. We're so busy meeting our goals and our dreams, our expectations, buying this, going there, going wherever, that God said, okay, we're going to stop this. I want you to understand I'm still in control of all things. These things came, and they showed us in our houses. Many were obedient, um, and others weren't. But anyway, that's another story. All right? That's another story. But as we went to the situation, we come to understand that we come to a, a mindset. And a lot of believers believe that Christianity was only coming to church on Sunday morning, and I, may, I paid my dues. It was a way of killing the conscience, saying, okay, I'm okay with God. I practice my religion. Now I can face the rest of the week. We went in such complacency. Sat back. Just expected things to happen because they're going to happen, and we forgot how to seek the face of God. We forgot how to spend time with God and give God the time that He deserves, not what we had left over. It wasn't about the day I can make the church, I'll go, the day I can't, but I just won't go. God understands. He's asking for commitment. He's wanting to unite something bigger and better in the Christian walk that you would understand. He wants to bless you out in a special way. But there's a price to pay for We just can't sit here and expect it to fall from heaven. Nothing to call to fall from heaven. We need to seek and desire and want it in our heart. So when this became part of the norm of many Christian believers, we went from being really committed to Jesus Christ to oh well, whatever, and what God understands. To the fact that many people are born in church, raised in church, have fallen by the wayside. We become very complacent in their going to church. To the fact that many have also entertained the social part of life, joining the friends. Being part of the crowd, not being called a Christian, partaking of things that are not of God, and they're lying and say, in God, God is God of grace. I'm mindful of the fact. As I preached a funeral service, an individual came up to me and said, Pastor, preach it like you've never preached it before. I had no idea why. I had no idea why they came up to write for the service. It's a funeral service and said that. Once it all said and done, after the service are done, person walks up and says, You know why I said that? I said, why did you say it? I said, because I heard someone say, and now we've got to listen to that Pentecostal preach. Now I can listen to that guy preach too. Because he's part of our family. You know, people, we gotta tell it like it is. And when people become uncomfortable with the message, there's something wrong with our lives. When you're not comfortable with what you're receiving from God, God is speaking to your heart. A lot of times things that we don't like, I mean, we don't like them, but we have to go through them. We have to experience them. And especially when we're dealing with your eternity, my friend, my brother, we need to get it right. We need to understand. We can't run our life on automatic pilot and expect to make it to heaven. God's asking a personal relationship with God. That we're not taking for granted. We understand that He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He's every going for life. But we have a responsibility to ourselves. And people say, I want to do this for God. No, do it for yourself. God is still God. The person that needs God is you. You're the one that needs to straighten out your life and make a commitment that God wants our life that he might understand that he can use you as a vessel to touch your life and in turn not only save you and give you eternal life, but you might touch the lives of so many other they need the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. So I come to the question that a lot of people say, well, in this time of trial, there's a lot of people reaching out. Oh, I, now, when the church opens, I'm going to show up. Well, where are they? You know, okay. Well, the church is show up. We're going to go. We're going to go because I want the truth. And you speak to different people, I don't care what church you go to, they'll say, we got the truth. <laughs> God may say, we are the only ones that have the truth. Only our church is going to go to heaven. They get some dogmatic about stuff like that. 
Well, you know, you want to understand, ask these questions. Where are you looking for a church? A place to congregate? A place to worship? Who are you looking for? What are the questions you have to answer? Are you looking for a place where they have good music? Or a place where they have no good music? No. We can have the greatest singers in the world, but it's not annoying it only sounds good. It only tickles our our like, oh yes, thank you, Jesus. But no, it's annoying. The power of God is going to come down. But that singer takes that microphone and begins to sing the worship of the Lord Jesus Christ. When that musician begins to strum the guitar, the drum, the piano, the keyboard, begins to play, and begins to flow through that, the Holy Spirit begins to flow, something good is going to happen in the house. Because from the altar, from the place that we call sacred unto God, flows the blessings of God, flows the power of God, flows the Holy Spirit of God. The one greatest desire in my, in my church is the following people. I thank God we have great musicians. We have great singers. God does all of that. But also want the Spirit of God to flow in such a dynamic way. There'll be something I won't need to preach. There'll be so much glory in the house. I won't have to preach because God has done His thing. This is what you look for. Not that they sound so pretty. And it's not only the wrong with people sounding pretty. Pretty. I think when you're perfection, what you do, you want to always give your best. But never at the cost of God's anointing over your life. But when you sing, you sing with a passion. You sing with a message you have to deliver. When you play, you play understanding there's someone out there that needs this song. There's someone out there who's going to be touched by what you're doing. You're not just anywhere at that time. You're a vessel of God. And we have people like that standing at the altar, singing, worshiping, praising God with the anointed Holy Spirit. You know what? The pretty takes care of itself. How pretty it sounds take care of itself. Why? Because the anointing of God is upon it. We need to understand. Are you looking for a church where they preach what you want to hear? Or what you need to hear? A lot of people just want to come. I'm doing okay. It's all right. It's all right. Every God is God of mercy, God is love and understanding, and I understand that. I preach that. I live that. I believe that. But it's not a license to fall by the wayside. It's not a license to become complacent. And I want to hear from God to speak to God. Because it doesn't matter how many, how we learn the gospel, we still make mistakes. I'm going to say a good amen. amen. We still make mistakes in life. We still sin in life. We still need help from God in our life. We need to hear it and we need to be told as the Bible teaches that we might understand to go forward. What are you looking for? A lot of parents are looking, oh, I want a church that's going to fill my need, and they forget all about their kids. As long as daddy and mama are happy, they can know, oh, we're going to church and go to church and I say so. Well, people, you need to find a church and minister to you, dad, mom, and to the family, to your young person, to your kids. I've had experiences here at this church where individual families come in and they have kids in the family and Kids, people, you know, like, I get very friendly with all my kids and stuff. All of a sudden, that mom decides, oh, we're going to go to church somewhere else. And the kids, like, they don't really want to go. What was the end result? Those kids are really nice. No longer at church. They no longer serve the Lord. They want to listen to the Lord because they were taken out of what was important to their lives. That mom, don't only think of you. Think of the future of your kids that are returning to. Give them all they want if you want to materially. Give them all you want you can afford but don't take Jesus away out of their lives. Once they have found a place and they're planted in a, in a congregation where they Sunday school teachers they love, that they appreciate, and want to be with, you know, then you got to keep them there. When you find you there under the teaching, receiving the teaching of God, and they're being blessed, why would you ever move? Why would you ever want to go anywhere else where your family is being blessed? To me, the greatest asset in my life is to watch my kids be blessed. When my kids are blessed, I am blessed. I'm happy beyond, because that's what's important in our lives. We are given the challenge to prepare them for eternity. But a lot of times we only think of ourselves, and oh, this is what I want for my life. So as you look for a church, you look for a ministry, a ministry that doesn't feel the need of all. So they say, yeah, Pastor, but what is true? What is true? We go to the Word of God, if you want to know what truth is, let's go to the source. Let's not listen, but this person says, or that person says, or this, no, no, forget what people are saying. Let's go to the source of what God calls truth. John chapter 14, verse number 8. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth. truth. I am the truth, and I am the light, and no one comes to the Father but by me. People, it didn't speak any clearer than that. This is what Jesus is saying. This is what he desires. He declares himself to be the truth. There is truth in him. There is no lies. Everything he promises, as long condition of it, he's going to fulfill. So he says, I am truth, and people, and that's what you're looking for. 
You're looking for someone that's true God. It's Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ speaks, He doesn't leave you hanging there to see how it's going to happen. No, no. He also gives you the answer to all this. See, we just don't look many times. We're so busy being complaining, we don't look for answers. We just want to be comfortable. But see, the Bible even gives us the answer. He says, if you want the answer, which is where the truth is, then you go with me to the book of Mark, chapter number 16, verses 17 and number 18. And in that scripture, Jesus defines who the true believer is and what you should be looking for in a church. The people that do these things, the church that does these things, these are doing what truth is all about. Look what it says, the book of Mark 16, 17, 18. And these are the signs that will follow those who, who, who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up servants. And if they drink something deadly, they will not harm them. They will lay their hand upon the sick, and they shall be healed. When you find people that practice this, when you find a church that teaches and practices, you have found truth. Now, Michael, let me tell you something. You didn't find perfection, you found truth. This is just the expression. This is just a sign that indicates the true believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and what Christ expects out of this church. Now, there's a lot of copycats. You know, there's a lot of things in life that pain means that you want to rid of, you don't want to pay stuff like that. And I understand that things are very good about identifying a genuine, unique, right kind of person. Louis Vuitton, I have no idea what it is, but they say, I know what the fake one is, what it's all about, and what the real one is about. What do you want? I want the real thing. I want the real report. I want, no, don't give me the invitation. See, and in your relationship with God, you need this one. You don't need a duplicate. You don't want a look-alike. You want the truth. You need something that's going to help us when you're walking through the walk of the Lord Jesus Christ. That leads you into a journey that you might understand. That if we deliver this challenge to your life, to practice it in your life, this is to make you a better believer. God is going to raise an army people. He's raising an army right now. We pray for a tremendous harvest of souls that are come to the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. But yet he has to start within the church. There are raised many people that believe in these things. You get to practice these things because when people walk through the road of the church, they're going to need all these things we're going to talk about. They're going to need it for their lives. And if we don't have it, they have to go somewhere else to find it. So who is we? Not this building. You and I are believers in Jesus. So, Pastor, what are the signs that define the truthful church of the Lord Jesus Christ? Sign number one. In my name shall they cast out demons. That's the first one. What is there? I think it's a priority. The one thing that the Lord is saying to Paul in. in John 10, 10, he said, I have come that you might have life, you have an abundance. And then he knows the abundant life in Jesus Christ comes with God's blessing upon you. When he reaches out and you reach out to him, you find the Lord and Savior, then something good is going to happen. From the very moment you found Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then the scripture says, no longer do I live, but Christ lives within me. I'm a new creature in Jesus Christ. So therefore, everything that I'm about, everything that I do, I come to understand that God's protection, my salvation, is from the inside out. The things I carry within me, you can't touch. You can touch outward things. You can take away from me outward things. You can take away from me God, things God has blessed me with, maybe. But you can't take my conviction out of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when you find me as Lord and Savior, when I'm Lord and God, there will be divine protection over your life. Nobody can touch you. We so you need to understand the reason why this is a priority. Because ever since the beginning when it happened, when the fall of man happened, there was also conflict between Satan and, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ on the day of creation, I love it. You read that, he said, and he said it was good, and he rested. And he said it was good. And the last thing God made in creation was, he made man. That crown of his creation. We are the only one that carry the image of God. We're the only ones, you know. I have some sad news for some of you. Some of you are expecting to hear, see your, your dog, your heaven, and doggy heavens, there's no such thing, all right? They don't have souls. They say, we, we're the only ones that have the image of Christ. Isn't it? So we understand that we go into this situation, there's a battle going on for your soul. The day you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the enemy mocked you as a prime target to come after you. He's a deceiver, he's a liar, and he has no shame. And because you used to belong to him, I can think about that. Oh no, Pastor. But if you don't believe there's only two places to belong to people, you either belong to Jesus or you don't. And if you don't, you know you belong. And he knows you inside and out. He knows all your weaknesses. He knows everything about you because he's a deceiver. 
Bible says, he like a roaring lion and seeking whom he may devour. He comes after their weaknesses. He's not dumb. He's not dumb. He's going to take away to keep him hurt. He's going to take away to really take it really take it out. He brings temptation, man. Pastor, I'm going to come in and serve Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, the Lord. Pastor, never before. All my workers, they offer me drugs now. They offer me beer now. They offer them the other that the devil most worry about. He doesn't want you to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants you in hell with him. That's what he wants to take you. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have an abundance. He said, you find me a Lord and Savior, I will give you strength. And within, when temptation comes up, you'll be stronger from within. And it's not your religion. It's not your church. It's the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the conviction within your heart. That's your God you pour in that place. I will do nothing to offend the Lord Jesus Christ. If he gave his life on Calvary for me and he wants to protect me, I need to do my part. I need to be man and man enough or woman enough to walk away from the situation. We need to understand in fulfilling God's mission in our lives, we need to be spiritual and not in the flesh. When we go to the flesh, the flesh is deceived. The flesh lies to us. The flesh allows all our past to come into fight. The one thing the enemy will always use in your relationship with God, as you walk through a dry spell in your Christian walk, he will always bring your past to the So fair right in front of you. Oh yeah. And the one thing a lot of people don't realize, they're going to God like they said, well, I was better off when I wasn't serving Jesus Christ. I've heard that from people. I was better off when I was a believer in Jesus Christ. You don't mean you don't remember everything you went through before you came to the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't understand that. But as you go to that trying time, you need to hold on to your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to take the enemy away from your life and understand that God is in control of all things. He will stop. He will stop with nothing to take it out. He wants your soul just like Jesus wants your soul. And the one that makes that choice of eternity is not God. It's not the devil. It's you. You make that final kind of choice. That's what it's all about. To be strong from within. Yet yeah, I remind from the fact of the story of Job. When Satan goes and begins to talk to God. And God tells, tells Satan, have you concerned my servant Job? I love it. I love it. When Satan says, you have me so well covered, I can't touch you. And the God of Job is your God and my God also. Amen. There's a divine protection of God upon our life. A powerful anointing of God upon our life. If we let it flow, people, good things are going to happen. If we release that faith from within and we get to serve the Lord Jesus Christ with a passion that we're supposed to serve Him, we're going to find the power of God working within our son. We understand, boy, I'm not walking alone. The Lord is going to be with me. And if God be for me, God be with me, I can do all things through Jesus Christ. Amen. As a believer in Jesus Christ, I need to walk with that determination. I need to understand there's a divine protection God has afforded me. For the day I received Jesus Christ, Lord, say, listen to this. The day you found the Lord and Savior, He sealed you with His Holy Spirit. There's a seal upon your life. That if you're serving the Lord Jesus Christ, and then He comes looking around, and He looks within your life, He sees that seal, He can't touch you. He cannot touch you. Understand this. Now let me explain a few little things. Because I hear a lot of comments and videos on this situation. People say, well, Pastor, can the enemy, can the demons possess a believer? And the answer is no. No. Well, when you say that, Pastor, the devil and the Lord never occupy the same place. Never. Never occupy the same place. And I've heard people say, well, we were in church, and we were so and so, and the uh, demon took care of it. No, well, then he wasn't brother, he was uh, my friend. He was my brother in Jesus Christ. Because there's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. When you have been cleansed and washed and sealed by the Holy Spirit, there's a power within you. He can't possess you. He can oppress you. You felt the oppression of the enemy around you as you go to life. He come out against you. But then, here we go. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You and I can be oppressed. We can feel his presence. I know I've, I've, I've been in present time. You can feel that eerie feeling, that bad feeling. But there's power in the name of Jesus Christ. He can't possess you. He can't own you. Because in my name you shall cast out demons. Then we also we get this straight. Because we're going to find out here in the last sermon the following thing. He says, Upon the sick they shall lay their hands, they shall be healed. Understand one thing. There's a difference between exorcism and divine healing. Totally different. Totally different. Exorcism has to do with the demons. Attack of the enemy. How you possess your life, hang around your life. That's exorcism. Healing 
This was Jesus Christ literally on the cross. So you need to understand that when Jesus says, he says, you know, they're going to be troubled. That has people enslaved, and in sin is the enemy. He says, but in my name, in the name of Jesus. So every time we run into a situation, every time we walk into a situation, every time we say things happening, what is our job? What is our responsibility? We leave it to Jesus Christ. It's our responsibility to call upon the name of the Lord. Well, you see, he didn't only warn us this was going to happen. He didn't only say it was going to happen to our lives. He also taught it very strongly in the Word of God the following day. I find in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. Here's the weapon that we've been given. Here we go again. That last song, when I heard the song the powerful name of Jesus. There's no name above that name. I said, yes, Jesus. You're just confirming this message. You're just confirming how this message is going to finish. Because the Bible says the following words. In the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 9 to 11. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above all names. That in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and of those on the earth and those under the earth and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is God. There's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's what he said. You don't come against us in the name of your church, in the name of your religion. You fight this spiritual battle in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You need to understand this. Why does it say that, Pastor? What can understand this? When Jesus Christ left his only glory was to reunite man, fallen race with the Lord, with, with Heavenly Father. So he came into this earth. He lived. He died. Listen to this. Are you ready for this? When Jesus on the cross said, It is finished. That was your liberty. It was done. The price was paid. But it wasn't yet activated. You ever get a credit card in the mail and you got to call in to get it activated? But when Jesus died, he said, It is finished. The price was paid. It's all in place now. All we need is to activate it. So how did he activate it? On the third day, he rolled the power from the grave. And once he did that, that name became name above all names. That is the name of Jesus, not a dead Christ, not a Christ on the cross, not a Christ in the tomb, a risen Jesus Christ, that his name, every knee in heaven and in earth and beyond the earth, shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I tell you, let me tell you something, that is still very much alive today. That we might understand that in the name of Jesus, there's power, there's authority. You go with the greatest weapon of all. You serve a risen Savior. You serve a Jesus Christ of the day. A Christ that can undo the works of the enemy because greater is he that is within you. Use that that God has given you. The name that is above all names, the name of Jesus. Whenever the enemy comes against your life and you feel the oppression and you feel down, you feel whatever, begin to proclaim the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. There's something about that name and a calm is going to come. The struggle is going to cease because there's power in the name of Jesus Christ, then demons in hell tremble at the name of Jesus. The one thing they don't want you to use is the name of Jesus. That's why he said, because I have risen from the dead, and I have the Christ. You will use my name, because now I'm the boss. Now I'm in control. Now I have the power to meet the needs of people as we go forward. But we might understand it in our relationship with God, we will move forward that there's power in the name of Jesus Christ. I have no idea what you're going through today. As you listen to this message, how the enemy has you down. How you're so down. People will say, I'm down on my luck. No, you're down on your life. Because God's not about luck. He's about faith. Amen. He's about believing in who it is. And take into account within your heart what Jesus wants for your life. He said, I've come that you might have light and have it how? Abundance. I want you to have joy. People, what is the joy of the Lord? We've all experienced it in different ways. I've always talked to you as a pastor, the joy of the Lord is not ha 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 no. The Lord of the, the Lord is an assurance within your heart. That even though those great storms have risen against you, something that you can say but we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be alright. But when everything seems to be impossible, even have the truth is. It's impossible, there's nothing impossible for God. As long as you allow him to be Lord. For in my name, he said. Not in your experience of 20 years in church, in my name. Who I am today in your life, Jesus says. And you might say, well, Pastor, you really don't understand the magnitude of what we're up against. Many people uh, during this week, they're talking, they say, Pastor, 
How could you handle this? How did you both go through this? I said, because I have an assurance in my heart that we're going to be okay. I stood here a week ago, and I said to you, there's nothing I can do in a parking lot of the hospital that I can do for my wife. I know the enemy wants to stop these messages, but I will not stop. For I know, this is the way I finished my message last week, I know that if I take care of him, he's going to take care of me. Amen. And then we got our marriage. That's what it's all about, people. Good Jesus of the day. Come on, I want you to, this morning, just put your thoughts together. Put your life together. And whatever's coming your way, however the enemy is attacking your life, you need to be bigger. Bigger. You just stand up and find the peace that surpasses all understanding. And when people say it can't be done, Jesus says, just watch me do my thing. And when people give up, you don't give up. You don't give up. Stand strong in the promises of God. The answer is coming. I assure you, the answer is on its right. Not on your time, in his time. And he's never left. But today I just challenge you. I don't really care what you're going through today. And the sense that God can feel for me. I called upon him. We called upon him this last week. And we watched him. And my Jesus, that's your Jesus. Amen. He's the same Jesus. So today I want you to take a moment. I want you to shut your eyes for just a moment and bring your knee before God. And say, Heavenly Father, you know, this is what I'm going through. And don't be discouraged. And don't feel like God's not going to listen. And don't say, I don't deserve it because I haven't been good. I've always said, God will never refuse a repentant heart. So come into his presence with repentance. And say, Jesus, I believe. I'm sorry. I've been faithful. I'm sorry for my negligence. But today I understand there's power in the name of Jesus Christ. And I come to you to that source. Wherever you might be. Wherever you receive this message. Take a moment. Stop whatever you're doing. And give God your undivided attention. Enter into his presence. You have that right. He gave you that right when he said it is finished. And the veil of the church was open to give you entrance into his presence. Enter his presence with the assurance that God's in control. And you'll walk out of presence knowing you're not alone. The Lord is with you. Heavenly Father, I come before your presence. To thank you, Lord, for your love. To thank you for your strength and your fellowship. We you allow me, Lord, to deliver the challenge to those that have come to church this morning. Those watching through Facebook and YouTube will live you on. That they might find the Jesus I'm speaking about. So in the midst of their greatest trial, they might understand there's nothing so big that you can't have. So today, Lord, I bring those that have received the challenge and are willing to come into your presence and are willing, Lord, to uh, give you an opportunity to work within our lives. We come against all pain, all affliction, all oppression, everything that has not bound, and in the precious name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above all names, pour out of your love and of your power, and of your anointing, and God bring deliverance, bring joy, bring understanding, break the bondage, remove the fear, give them strength, let them know there's power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and because you live, we can face tomorrow. So in the precious name of Jesus, I ask you, Jehovah, Father, just be there. Be there. Be there. Touch the last. Minister to their hearts and let them know they'll never walk alone as long as they serve you. For the one thing we understand, the enemy comes like a roaring lion, but we have the lion of Judah, which is you. To defend us, to protect us. To keep what is sacred within our lives sacred. To the power of the Holy Spirit of God and to the powerful name of Jesus Christ. We call you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for all We glorify your holy name. We're expected to hear testimonies this week. Oh, what you've done. We've taken the first step. Sign number one. In my name they shall cast out the news. For this is truth. And you shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. I ask it in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Take a moment.
you that are here in the sanctuary, take a moment for yourself. And put it where God can really minister to your life. That's what you came for. You came to find peace, you came to find an answer. And that what you were carrying as a Lord that's so hidden. They want nobody to know because for shame or whatever reason. I want you to place him in his hands. And just let him do his thing. Don't walk out of here. Do not walk out of his service. Defeat, destroy, or discourage. Because there's power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God be with you. God bless you. God strengthen you. And God lead you to this week. A week of victory, a power and energy, until we get to bed again. To share our heart. But we're going to talk next about what the scripture talks about. How we can define what truth really is. And once we're done with this message, we got it down. Not what Pastor said, what Jesus said in his it's true. God bless you. God be with you. And I'll see many of you on Wednesday to the Bible study. The ones that I've been taking the class of collision, you can pick it up through the, still through, Mike is still on uh, Facebook doing this thing. They turn to get all these buildings all stored up. When we get people to come to church, then we'll do it here. But right now, continue to watch Mike on Wednesday night. We'll teach here on Wednesday night. And then we'll give you any further motion, any changes we make. We'll let you know so we can. Also, I know Mike is jumping to get back live. The kids are, you know, but we need the kids to come in order to get to see that. So uh, we just encourage you. Find the strength to come in. Uh, for those that are helping and support our ministry, we thank you for your time and offering which you've given unto us. Thank you. We bless in such a special way. But uh, we're still going on. It's done at your help. God bless you. God be good to you. And supply all your need according to the riches of the Lord. And believe me, there's still power in the name of Jesus Christ.